Hello, my name is Vince, and today we are going to download a PDB file from the web, and we're going to practice um, viewing this file in VMD. So right now, um, we're on the RCSB Protein Data Bank uh, website. We've uh, selected a PDB file, and uh, we're downloading the uh, PDB file and saving it locally. So um, I recommend saving it in the text version so that you don't have to immediately unzip it before opening it in VMD. So now that we have saved the PDB file locally, um, open the web, open your terminal, and type in VMD to launch uh, the VMD uh, package. Right, so VMD has loaded, and uh, there are several several window panes that you can adjust. Uh, you can move them around uh, your display as you please. So we went to File, Select New Molecule, which opens a new uh, tab where we can browse uh, locally. Um, here's our uh, the file we just downloaded from the web, uh, 1j3i.pdb, which is a bifunctional enzyme. Uh, it's actually a dimer of bifunctional enzymes. Click the load button and this automatically displays the PDB in a simple uh, line format. You can move the VMD viewing pane and you can also resize it uh, anywhere on your display. And you can also rotate the molecule by clicking with your mouse. And as you hold the mouse button, you can uh, rotate and translate the molecule. As you can see, it's uh, clearly a dimer. And um, you can zoom in by using the scroll button on your mouse if you have a mouse, or by using your mouse pad uh, if you're using a, a laptop. So we open the graphical representations tab and this is where we can create as many uh, graphical representations as we want right now all of the everything in the PDB file is displayed in the line format here we're typing all protein so this is going to be only the protein uh, only atoms that are a part of the protein are going to be in uh, this representation Notice how there's many different drawing methods to choose from. So, for instance, we have selected uh, Van der Waal, and so this shows the protein in the Van der Waal representation. Um, we can also select from a number of other possibilities, uh, including various types of molecular cartoons, like uh, cartoon uh, uh, ribbons, and um, my personal favorite is a uh, new cartoon. Notice the color is in teal, which is the default for VMD. We can change this, uh, and we'll go over that later. So let's create a new representation. Um, our new representation isn't going to simply be the protein atoms. It's going to be everything that's not protein, so all not protein. So this is going to include crystallographic waters, uh, uh, bound inhibitors, substrate, uh, any molecule in the PDB file that is not a uh, protein. So we selected the licorice uh, drawing method for the all not protein representation. And as you can see, this, kind of, this shows where the uh, two active sites are, um, one on each end of the, um, uh, of, of the monomer. The, the red dots are the oxygen uh, atoms from the, wat the crystallographic waters. So um, we can also add to our representation uh, the words and not water. So now it's only the uh, uh, substrates, ligands. We can also, of course, change the representations of uh, any of these selections. Uh, in this case, we changed the crystallographic waters from uh, uh, from points to uh, to Van der Waals spheres. 
Uh, notice in the coloring method we can pick something called color ID um, where we can uh, pick from a variety of different colors. Uh, so notice that we have three different representations uh, that are all simultaneously contributing to our um, uh, VMD viewing screen. Notice that we can change the coloring method. Uh, the most common is the color is is the uh, atom uh, type, but you can also color it by secondary structure. In this case, purple is our alpha helices, and the yellow is the beta sheet uh, secondary structure. But uh, this this representation, there this set of representations is fairly crowded, so uh, it might be nice to uh, remove the waters, uh, the ligands. You can do this by double clicking on the representation. So here we're only showing the protein, and so in red, so the the, the representations that aren't being displayed uh, show up in red, so that you can reactivate them later if you wish. Um, so there are uh, 31 different color IDs to pick from. So you can also color by residue type. And so uh, in this case, the hydrophobic residues are in, uh, are in gray. Um, acidic residues are in red. And basic residues are in blue. So uh, here we're showing just the licorice uh, representation of the uh, bound inhibitors and substrates. If we want to, we could only display the, uh, the water molecules. So you can have as many representations as you want, and uh, you can toggle between them. And uh, by double clicking on a representation, it turns red, and that uh, will not be displayed in the VMD viewing pane. So you can have multiple molecules loaded simultaneously, but in this tutorial, we're just going to focus on one. Um, so we just went to the uh, color uh, option box, and uh, it's common to uh, change the background color of the uh, in the VMD viewer, especially if you're trying to produce uh, production quality graphics uh, for publication. Um, so in this case, we're going to change the display background from black. Uh, we're going to change it to white. You can actually change it to any background color you want, but black and white are the most common. You can also make white the default background color. So if we go to the graphics tab and click colors, uh, that's where all these controls are, and uh, you can control almost any part of the VMD viewing window. Everything from the labels to the stage to the to the res names to uh, labels, which uh, we'll show you uh, more about in a minute. So in, in the mouse you can change between the rotate mode, which is the default mode, to translate mode. And this allows you to translate the molecule. You can also hit the T button on your keyboard and that will automatically take you into the translate mode. And you can, you can uh, hit the R button on your keyboard to go into rotate mode. So you can do the same thing in the graphical user interface uh, by clicking mouse and then switching between rotate and translate. And uh, this can allow you to get a good view of whichever uh, parts of this structure are of most interest to you. So under mouse, uh, we selected a label. And we are uh, we, when we click on a uh, part of our system, it will automatically apply default label properties. In this case, it's uh, lime green, but um, you can go into the colors option and change this to black or to blue or to any color that you wish. Um, so we've just labeled uh, an atom. And so we're going to go back into the label uh, properties and pick a uh, pick two different residues. And those are even though they don't actually form a bond between each other, we can uh, uh, we can call them a bond for the purposes of measuring the distance between these residues. So under the labels tab, um, we can uh, scroll down and pick between atoms uh, and bonds. We can choose to either show these labels or to hide them. And um, 
We can also have uh, dihedrals uh, that we can specify. And uh, there's a variety of properties uh, in, under this labels tab where you can uh, change uh, just about everything about the appearance and uh, position of labels. So at this point we've uh, hidden some labels. You can also delete labels um, for atoms and we, have, uh, uh, we haven't created any dihedral um, labels yet, but uh, we'll do that in a moment. So if we click on the dihedrals option, uh, you can specify uh, 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 three atoms and um, then we can we can change the uh, uh, the format of these labels and uh, if this wasn't uh, a static PDB structure if this was a um, uh, if this was like a molecular dynamics uh, uh, file um, we we could we could plot as a function of time the distances between various residues and or atoms. Um, it's also possible to change, of course, the uh, uh, the appearance of the labels. Right now, it's uh, they all end in uh, C alpha, uh, CA for the stands for the alpha carbon, and uh, uh, we can change the appearance of that in the advanced options. But uh, right now, we're going back to the graphical representations, where um, we're going to go ahead and select save visualization state because we've done a lot of work on this visualization state. We want to be able to open this file without having to start from scratch with the original PDB. So we're going to name this uh, example uh, underscore VMD and all these VMD files are going to end in the dot VMD extension. So we went ahead and saved that uh, dot VMD file locally. So now what we're going to do is um, we're going to uh, close the uh, uh, this molecule can do that by clicking on the D uh, uh, letter that's next to the molecule in the VMD main menu. Um, so we've closed the molecule, so nothing's loaded right now, and now we're going through and selecting. Uh, we could choose to either select the original PDB, or we can pick. Uh, we can we can load the VMD state that has all of our labels and our coloring. So here is our uh, reloaded VMD file. And we deleted that and we can we can go back in if we want to we can pick the original PDB and uh, we can load that um, and we can start from scratch. So now uh, we're going to go ahead and quit VNP.